and I definitely offended some dudes the last time I reviewed this book. So I'm not going to go into detail again. Hello everyone! My name is Holly and welcome to the very popular annual mid-year book freakout tag where I get an excuse to fill up a video slot. I hope this is still entertaining even if you've watched it a million times but we are halfway through the year and it's great to kind of analyze these things. We will be talking all that I've read so far in this first half of the year to see how my reading has been, how little I have actually read which might make these questions harder to answer because there isn't a ton to choose from. Disappointed is putting it mildly. And we'll be looking on into the future to kind of give you an idea on why I plan to read in the second half of 2021. Also to give me an idea because I don't have a freaking clue, bro. So there are 13 questions here, but let's talk about my Goodreads reading goal first because I think that's a great segue into the subject. So out of the 50 books that I would like to read this year because I did not want to bog myself down by a big number, I've read 23 books as of filming this video. I am three books behind schedule apparently. Graphic novels are starting to look lovely right now. Let's be real though, we are halfway through the year and I am pretty much halfway through my goal. So screw you Goodreads, you are wrong. Can you read bitch? So the least amount of books I have read in years and honestly I am so proud of those 23 books. And they have all been mostly like chunky 500 pagers and even my July TBR is mostly adult fantasy and sci-fi. I am honestly designed as a human being to only read massive books. Blessing or a curse, you decide. I guess you could kind of call it like a low-key reading slump this year, but I binge read all of John Gwen's books and that is just like an instant book hangover, but I am determined I will hit that 50 goal. June was a fantastic reading month for me and July so far is looking, okay, it's looking sporadic, but I anticipate August to be a really good month of reading. Also, I have seriously have almost only read new releases this year, which is insane to me because I never used to be like that. It was mostly backlog books for me but we are killing it in the art game publishers love me this year you love me girl yes martin you know i do okay let's go ahead and dive into the questions and the first one right off the bat is best book you've read so far this year so i am going with a finale for this one and that is wrath by john gwen actually the best finale to a series i have ever experienced it's literally heart stopping i had to be resuscitated mouth to mouth my boyfriend loved it the fourth and final book in the faithful and the fallen series it is the kind of book that doesn't have a single dull moment the final battle is literally two 200 pages of tense bloody action that is gruesome and at times tragic grab tissues girl you're gonna need it the ending was so satisfying and so beautifully crafted it is just the perfect climax to this series the perfect answer to this question and as i came to the end of this conclusion there were some things i expected but most were things i had me guessing until the very end if you like adventures and awesome friendships and action galore grim Grim enough to be grimdark but very hopeful enough to be something else. The values of heroism and sacrifice, love, and friendship shines in the core of this series. I don't know man, it is just so epic. It managed to conclude everything that was initiated from Malice, the first book. I I love it. John Gwynn, evil genius. He managed to make every book better and better. He's probably an alien because no one should wield that type of talent. So question number two is best sequel you've ever read. And I'm going through my list of books I've read so far this year and I haven't read a direct sequel yet. It's all been finales to series but not like book two. Now finally enough, I am currently reading a sequel and you know what? I'm just going to include it here. Chaos Vector. I am halfway through. It counts. I have some feelings. I'm liking it so far. I don't want this to turn into like a review because I will be giving you all of my thoughts in my July wrap up, but I will say this book is definitely suffering from my bad memory. Where am I? <laughs> This happens every single time I wait till too long to continue, even just like the 
normal year really screws me up. My enjoyment is tanking because I have lost the the world's juices, the world building juices, the character juices. How many times can I say juices? It's still a great book and I still have the whole second half to look forward to, but the whole beginning was just me trying to reconnect names and places to my slow ass brain. Oh, this is the first book to Velocity Weapon, great adult sci-fi by a female author to try out if that's what you're looking for. Velocity Weapon has an awesome introduction with the main character, suddenly waking up on a ship all alone many years in the future. The atmosphere sphere is gold. But yeah, this is so far taking longer for me to settle in and it's all my fault. New release you haven't read yet, but one, two. And this question is so freaking mean because the list is endless. I literally have a video dedicated to new releases that I upload every single month. So I am very aware of what's coming out and all the ones I talk about, I like the sound of. I guess I should just stick to the ones that I physically own because I think that's more fun. So for this one, I'm going to go with the Jasmine Throne. Tasha Suri is a very smart and funny woman on Twitter and it just makes me want to read her new release even more. Though I'm not a fan of romance and I'm sure this is heavily pivoted toward that as it's following lesbian characters who, you know, connect and it's so enticing to be still, especially the mix of Indian culture in a fantasy setting. The cover itself is beautiful and rich and I bet it showcases the story all the same. I've been highly anticipating it, but just one of the new releases I haven't had a chance to grab. Question four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. It's impossible to just choose one, so I have like three or four. The first one is The Wisdom of Crowds, which is the finale to the Age of Madness trilogy. It's Joe Abercrombie, so obviously number one at the top of my list. The biggest grabby hands of all time because I needed it so bad. The Bone Shard Emperor, which is the sequel to The Bone Shard Daughter, an adult fantasy that is so very easy to fall in love with. One of the best books that I read last year. I have a Should You Read it episode for it if you want to check it out. And finally, The Fall of Babel, the finale to the Books of Babel series, which I actually have a special announcement video for you, so look forward to that. It might be my next video if Future Holly isn't lazy. But yeah, these three books I am highly anticipating and I will be reading the moment I get them. Next is Biggest Disappointment. So I have a couple because, I mean, of course I do. So the first one is a book that was one of my most highly anticipated releases, and that is The Black Tongue Thief. And as you can see, it is such a beautiful book with a unique color and artwork. Also, the story itself is normally what I love, just that classic adult fantasy, but I think what ultimately got me was the writing style and some other things. I just couldn't do it. Everything was too much. There was no room to breathe. Scenes were like moving super quickly. It was like the author tried to cram every fantasy element you can think of into it. It felt like there was no story for me. And I definitely offended some dudes the last time I reviewed this book. so I'm not going to go into detail again so they don't get butt hurt, but not every book is going to be good for me, you know? And the next book that really disappointed me was The Wolf and the Woodsman. This is such an odd one for me because I was ultimately let down. There are so many things I liked about it, like the Hungarian culture and Jewish mythology interwoven within the magic system, which involved like self-mutilation, so trigger warning for that. And the beginning is very strong, but I hated how badly the main character treated everyone around her. She bullies the love interest who was such a sweetheart and kind, or he tried to be. For me personally, I have to like the main character to enjoy a book, whether they're a villain or a hero but it can get to a point where they're just constantly miserable and I don't want to read a character like that. I don't want to dwell on this too much because this is just so sad for me. The easiest question to answer is up next and that is the biggest surprise and I have to go with The World Gives Way. It ended up not being an all-time favorite. It was a 4 out of 5 star for me but man it's exactly what I needed at that moment and it was such a joy to read and experience. Had zero plans to read it. I saw the cover and immediately wrote it off like Nah, not in my genre of cards, but for some reason I came back to it and looked more into it and it surprised the fork out of me. It's an adult sci-fi where thousands of humans are living on a spaceship they call the world and there is a crack in the hall that cannot be fixed and everyone is literally going to die at any moment. Okay, procedure, procedure. 
very like doomsday novel a bit of like crime noir as well it's so engaging because you want to see what happens next it keeps you on the edge of your seat and not in like a there's a ton of action way because there isn't but more of a slow intense build up kind of way i don't know man i was so skeptical and i'm so glad i read it number seven is favorite new author so i had a totally different answer for this one in fact it was like a i didn't find a new favorite author until today okay and it's insane that this ended up happening when i didn't have an answer for this question and my new favorite author 100 percent i followed him on twitter i literally bought most of the rest of his books to the series that i started because it was a five star for me and that was the 12 kings of shara k by Bradley P. Bailu. I hope that's how you say it. I'm unsure. I'm not giving you an official review. In fact, I spoiled it by saying I loved it, but new favorite author right here. Okay, so question number eight is one that I cannot answer, and that is newest fictional crush. Always the hardest question to answer every single year because I just don't get crushes on characters. Not a single one, so we're moving on. But I can answer question number nine, which is newest favorite character, and I have to say, every character in the shadow of the gods and i'm not even kidding after having binge read the banished lands by this author i thought for sure he couldn't top it because those characters were like family to me i adored all of them so so much and i was sad to have to say goodbye but then i started reading this one and it's those feelings all over again and i'm so excited this is a viking inspired adult fantasy so all of the characters have such big hearts and determination as vikings do and you can't help but cheer for them all even the villains because gwen even it justifies their terrible deeds and some emotional backstory you just want everyone to survive and win and i love them all i don't want any of them to die but i've read the banished lands and i know it can so easily happen they're all dead. They're all dead in the third book. I'm just gonna predict it now. The next question is a book that made you cry, and the first one that comes to mind, I'm just going to mention it briefly because I've talked about this author a lot, but I can't help it when most of the books I've read this year, he's written, but I'm gonna go with Ruin, the third book in the Faithful and the Fallen series, and if you know, you know this book destroyed me and i highly recommend for your mental state to just immediately read wrath right after because if you don't you're scarred you'll never be the same life is pain life is only pain this one is rough guys the most cruel scene i've ever experienced in a book i really don't think anything will top it ever it's heart-wrenching <laughs> Okay, I said I was only going to mention it briefly, and here we are. The second book that took my heart and stomped on it a few times was The Coward. And I read this last month. This is about a heroic figure who has gone through a lot of ups and downs, mostly downs, honestly, and you just really feel for him. The ending is super sad. I love when authors can take characters you've been reading about the whole book and just... It hurts, but it hurts oh so good. Question number 11 is a book that made you happy, and this one is so easy. Void Breaker, especially the little bonus chapter ending the author added last minute. This is the third and final book in the Soulkeeper trilogy, a very underrated adult fantasy that I would say is comparable in some way to Final Fantasy. I just get a lot of those vibes, and especially in this finale specifically. But yeah, I can't talk exactly what made me happy. It's the biggest spoiler in the world, but definitely put a smile on my face and I'm glad the author made that decision. You'll have to read it to find out what I'm talking about. Most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received? Uh, this one is really hard, but I got two options. I'm cheating the system. One of them is Light of the Midnight Stars by Rena Rosner, and typically I like my covers where they have a beautiful landscape. I love landscape book covers, and this one isn't one, but I really like the whimsy design to this one, especially all of the detail and the gold and the blue. It's just really pretty. Definitely the second most beautiful book I have received this year is The Gilded Ones. This is the Alcrate edition, by the way, with the beautiful yellow spine um i just again love the colors to this one the yellow and the green and this beautiful portrait of this girl in the front Ugh, it's just like so aesthetically pleasing and one of those books where you just want to display it like this like cover facing outward Ugh. I might have to do that. And the final question I think is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? 
all of them. <laughs> I should just like, take my camera and show you a wide angle lens of my bookshelves because I have been a mood reader from hell this year. I don't know, besides the three books I mentioned in my most anticipated releases question. Wait, okay, actually I have an answer for this one. It's perfect. The series. I am going to binge read this entire uh, six book plus one novella, so seven book series this year. Probably in the next month because I just want to binge read them all at once. That's my answer. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to know some of your answers to these questions. Tell me your favorite book so far in 2021, your biggest disappointment. Maybe some of you can share some good recommendations down there in the comments. This year so far has been just a big fog for me, honestly, and I have no idea how we got to be in July already, which is why those 23 books feel so weird to me. Like, it should only be April. I'm measuring the year and the amount of books that I've read, and yeah, it's April just it's april <laughs> thank you so much for watching i hope you're all doing well and until we meet again happy reading